be looking at Ecclesiastics of Wisdom of Joshua and the Apocrypha. I'm not going to say that the Apocrypha is inspired by God, but some of it is, but yet at the same time there's great and wonderful principles that communicate the truth of the Word of God. We're going to correspond and we looked at chapter 1 of Ecclesiastics. We're going to look at here in a minute or two uh, Ecclesiastics or the wisdom of Joshua in the Apocrypha chapter 1. Chapter 2 we're going to do the same thing. Chapter 2 of the Ecclesiastics of the wisdom of Joshua as well as Ecclesiastics chapter 2. Or at least we're going to try to. I'm not going to say we're going to do it all the time, but, you know, anyways. And why is this the case? Because, number one, we are totally deprived. Number two, we have unconditional election. Number three, a limited atonement, irrespective of grace. Number five, preservation of the saints. This all ties into Ecclesiastic chapter, uh, Ecclesi the book of Ecclesiastic and Ecclesiastic, the wisdom of Joshua. Some of the book of the Apocrypha is inspired by God and some of it isn't. Don't know exactly all that in titles, so I will take the book with a grain of truth and don't necessarily say it's inspired by God. Only the Word of God is inspired by God. King Solomon is speaking from experience. And as God promised, He promised him wisdom, and he received wisdom, and in his early age, he had such enthusiasm, enthusiasm and compassion for God's truth, wanting to do his will and to use his wisdom accordingly, in line with his truth. But then later in his years, he started to backside slider might say you become a carnal Christian and was deceived led astray and that just led to nothing but misery and then towards the end of his life he got right with God and he wrote this book because through all that mess Lessons were taught to him. And through the mess of your life, the whole cold hard facts of life, you learn lessons of life. And hopefully you learn it the older you get. Like I said, some become from radical leftist liberals to conservatives I myself from a radical liberal to uh, a reformed Tory and of course as you know I believe in constitutional empires and monarchs but that's what I learned in life started out in a charismatic Pentecostal church got baptized there and then I became a pre-millennial dispensational pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib rapture theologian because I thought that was what the word of God taught 
because all the books that I read and were out there, that's what they taught. And I moved from, and then moved to a more radical Pentecostal direction. And then I moved into the Word of Faith movement for a while. And through all that, and then I went through some backsliding, became a carnal Christian, went through ups and downs. But eventually, in the end, I learned those hard, cold facts of life and begin to learn what the Word of God really teaches, uh, what it communicates. And so it's been my compassion, my passion since that time. And I've been a, a minister since 2001, a bishop since 2001. And so I formed, a, uh, became, uh, formed this ministry, the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, the Form Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon Royal, part of the Kingdom of God denomination. Established a local group of worship and ministry, personalized and then an internet type ministry, and it's been successful. And God's blessed me in so many ways. And my passion is to see to it that you, as a young Christian man or woman, are not deceived by the flattery of those Kenite, that Kenite theology that's out there. And if you don't know the essential doctrines of the Christian faith, knowing what you believe, why you believe it, and how to do the work of ministry, you will be led astray and deceived. And then you'll be on a trip of backsliding, and you won't even know it. Because you begin to follow these psychotic nut jobs to find on the Trinity Broadcasting Network uh, the other Christian networks not all of them uh, not all of them teach false doctrines some you know you got teach the truth uh, Joe Osteen which is becoming really popular these days uh, Joseph Prince and so forth. And this guy just kicks back and, you know, teaches his nonsense and twists his scriptures and he's getting rich and wealthy living in a fancy house while you probably live in abject poverty for listening to his garbage. Joseph, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses are there to deceive you. Uh, the Muslims are there to deceive you. Uh, the Mormons are there to deceive you. The Darwinian evolutionists are there to deceive you. The communists, the socialists, the Marxists, the radical leftists, communists, socialists, you know, etc., etc., are there to lead you astray and deceive you and think you can have some kind of utopian on earth without God. And King Solomon almost experienced most of all of those things. And what does he conclude? great wisdom and understanding and knowledge in his book and what does it communicate to us to us everything is vanity and vexation and meaningless and pointless apart from God the only way you can find true happiness true peace, true love, true fellowship, true utopianism, is through, uh, through uh, true wealth, true success, true prosperity, true power, 
true knowledge, true wisdom, true purpose and meaning, true aristocracy, true nobility is in is in Christ Jesus alone to his resurrected life ascension to the throne of God and his rule and reign from heaven and as soon as you recognize that fact and he wants you to have happiness, contentness he's going to make you prosperous he's going to make you successful he's going to make you Powerful is going to make you a member of the aristocracy, make you noble men and ladies of the kingdom of God, ambassadors, and all the wealth and the wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred to us, his church, his elect and very elect, to fulfill the great commission, to bring about the Christianization of the whole entire world ushering a golden age of peace and prosperity then Christ will return and destroy the devil and the flesh then those spirits in Hades or uh, I should say paradise will return to our bodies will be resurrected stand before the great white throne judgment reward be rewarded for the good and bad we've done in the Lord and some are going to be naked as a jaybird and then we're going to go into the third world age and heaven age the eternal states and forever for all eternity grow and learn God's truth is wisdom happiness peace and it's just going to be a ball and it's going to be physically on this earth and our bodies are going to be physically resurrected transformed and those who went to Hades are going to return to their bodies stand before the great white throne judgment and be judged and get what's coming to them the good, the bad, the ugly and be cast into hell for all eternity you know and I probably almost you know taught the whole entire book of uh, ecclesiastics but the emphasis must be made and there's only one church, one faith, one baptism, universal church, and the prophetic row coat of arms ministry is a participant in that universal worldwide church and kingdom of God, the kingdom of Israel, made up of God's elect and very elect the house of Israel, the house of Judah and the Gentiles who believe and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior the kingdom was inaugurated through Christ's death, burial and resurrection ascension to the throne of God and someday it will be un uh, consummated you know, the funny thing is, is some of these, you know, these, you know, word of faith churches, you know, they pick up on the post millennialist message found in Scripture, and I believe the post millennialist message is the correct biblical interpretation of Scripture, and as I've always said, that I'm a post millennialist partial preterist. I believe that's the facts, those are the truth. That's what the Word of God says, although I'm not going to divide on other churches that hold to the essential doctrines of the Christian faith. 
who have uh, secondary opinions.